Yes, brother. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir. Wa alaikum uh, My name is Nant Kumar. I'm a petroleum engineer here. I'm from Pakistan. My question is this, that as per Sanatan Dharam, the birth comes after birth. As per uh, the theory that uh, we have to take birth as depending on the karmas and the deeds. We have to take the change clothes. And uh, in, in Hinduism, we are following the same, that uh, you are getting a good family, a royal family, or in poor family, or you are disabled from birth, or you are dying in a younger age, it's depending on the deeds or the karmas of the past birth. What does it uh, show in the Islam? Does it the body is giving the, based on the karmas or deeds, if he is uh, getting birth in the royal family, or he is getting birth in the papa, otherwise he is getting uh, disabled in the birth, so what is the drawback of that to get this diet? The brother is asking the question about cycle of birth and rebirth with, uh, with Islam. If you, read in, if you read the Hindu scripture, if you read the Vedas, it talks about punar janam. Punar means next, Last janam time. means life. Even Islam believes in next life. But uh, in the Islam you say brother, the same body will become. Brother, let me complete. You asked the question, correct? Yeah. Let me give the answer. Okay, proceed. I didn't start the answer also and you Sabar. In Allah ma sabrin. Allah is with those who do sabar. You asked such a long question, I kept quiet. Okay. I am start to give the answer, now you give your comment. So in, in Hinduism, if you read the Vedas, it talks about punar, miss next, janam miss life. Even Quran speaks about next life. Nowhere in the Veda does it speak about death life, death life, death life. Nowhere. It is there in the lower scriptures. I'll come to it later on. In Islam, we believe we come in this world once. After we die, we'll be resurrected in the next life. That's it. Even Veda speaks about punar janam. Quran speaks about punar janam. But most of the Hindus, they believe in a philosophy called as samskara. Samskara means a cycle of birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, which is not to be found anywhere in the Vedas. We read Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita says that how an old body throws away the old clothes, so will a body take a new body. How a person throws the old clothes and wears new clothes, similarly body will throw away the old soul and take a new soul. Now this is what is said not by the Shruti. Shruti in Hindu scripture means word of God. Smriti means word written by human beings. So nowhere in the Vedas will you find about this concept of cycle of birth and death and birth and death. It is found in the lower scriptures. Now why did the scholars of Hinduism come with the philosophy called a samskara? Because they could not justify that some people are born in the rich family, some people in the poor family, some people are born Hindi, some people are born handicapped. So they could not blame, how can God be unjust? So because they could not justify why some people are born handicapped, some people are born in rich family, some people in poor family, they came with this philosophy that he did some mistake in the punar janam, sorry, in the previous life, he did a mistake, therefore he's born handicapped. And they believe that a living creature takes the human form seven times. Correct? Mm -hmm. If you do good deeds, you're born in the higher category. Correct? Mm -hmm. Hindu scripture. Okay. Now, brother, I'm asking you a question. Is evil in the world increasing or decreasing? Evil, depending on... Uh, in I'm asking self. you the question today in the world. Is evil increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Ah, what depending? Everyone will say increasing, unless you don't read the newspapers. Increasing, correct? The population of human beings is increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So isn't it contradicting? If, if evil is increasing, population of the world should decrease or not? Because human is the highest form. That is the reason this philosophy is illogical. No, but in the sense you can do the life is destroyed. Brother, let me complete my answer. You are asking me questions sometimes in between. No, I am asking you that is increasing or decreasing, you gave the answer. But I am protecting my question. Protecting, okay. How will you protect your question? So you are asking the, the human population is increasing. If you go in the back the Jurassic uh, area, there are too many animals that is now not in the land. So we have cut all the forests, the jungles is now converting the cities. 
So these animals, these plants, and these, uh, the plants are also the birth. This is also the Jannat. So these types of the uh, rules or the souls or the Atmas has been uh, generated in the humans and the animals and trees and plants has been eradicated from that. So the plants should become less now, plants are increasing or not? No, plants are getting a cutting, the forest and the jungles is going to be eradicated and they're becoming the cities and uh, villages. Is it increasing or not, animals are increasing or not as a whole? No, not increasing. Animals are increasing or decreasing, you don't know, science, you Google. No. You Google. Just for cattles, just for You are just arguing for sake of arguing, without knowledge, correct? Without knowledge. Now, I am asking you the question. This cycle of birth and death, it is mentioned nowhere in the Vedas. Is it mentioned? Give me reference. No, yeah, I am different upon the Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita. But Bhagavad Gita is not a Shruti, it is a Smriti. Which is more higher, Bhagavad Gita or the Veda? Vedas is the, we can say, it's the word of the God, the four books. Ah, Bhagavad Gita is not the word of God. Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat is the Shruti. It's advice given by Sri Krishna. To Arjuna. To Arjun. It is part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat, the word of God, is Mahabharat superior or Veda superior? Veda. Uh, correct. I am quoting from higher scripture, you are quoting from low scripture. So now coming back to it. The scholars of Hinduism could not justify why some human beings are born handicapped, some human beings are healthy. So they came with this philosophy of karma and dharma, mm -hmm. which is not part of the Veda. In Islam, what do we say? That we come in this world as a test for the hereafter. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mul, chapter number 6 and verse number 2, Allah di khalaq al al hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. <coughs> this life is a test for the hereafter. So we come in this life only once. Now every time the test differs with different people. Some people, Almighty God, gives them wealth. Now when He gives them wealth, he says that you should give zakat. Every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity. It's called a zakat. So if he gives you wealth, you have to give zakat. If you are poor, you don't have to give zakat. So he makes some people rich and test them, does he give zakat or not? He makes some people poor, they don't have to give zakat. Some people he makes healthy, some people with def heart defects. <coughs> now, Quran says, He has made your children as a test for you. Maybe the parents are very pious. They are praying five times a day. They have a child which is born with congenital heart disease. God wants to check them by giving them a test. Do they yet believe in God or not? The person who has with congenital defect, he has done no sin. It is wrong to say that a child is sinful. Why? In Islam, we believe every child is born as sinless. How can I be irresponsible? So in Islam, people are born in rich family and poor family as a test. As a test. They are born healthy or with a defect as a test. Depending upon the test, for example, if in an examination the question paper is very difficult, the correction is lenient, correct? Mm -hmm. If the question paper is easy, the correction is stricter. So depending upon the facility Almighty God has given you, this life is a test for the hereafter. So it is illogical to say that we have been born handicapped because we did a sin in the last life. Illogical. Okay, just, just That's the reason in Islam, this life is a test for the hereafter. Same what is mentioned in the Veda. So Quran matches with the Veda. What is mentioned in the other scripture is not matching with the Veda. That is the reason I discard it. Hope that answers the question. Okay, just uh, in addition of this one, uh, just like a baby is for nine months and uh, by birth he is uh, I dead. can't understand. Speak slowly, clearly and loudly. A baby just of nine months, by the time of birth he got died. Sorry? Uh, by birth, a baby of nine months, he got died. He birth or died, baby. So in that case, so he is going to be uh, day of judgment or he has uh, on no the day of judgment he'll go to heaven direct heaven direct what mistake has he done but he has suffered nine months in the kundi Paknar, just in the birth therefore he'll get heaven in the nine months he suffered therefore he'll get heaven alhamdulillah what's the problem good na only nine months nine months even you suffer and i suffered right or wrong 
Right. Now we are ready for him, Jannah. For you and I, God will check whether you did good or right. God will ask you, you attended the lecture of Dr. Zakir Naik, did you agree with him or not? God will ask you. Yeah, yeah. If you pass the test, Jannah. If you don't pass the test, hell. The if baby got you... saved, what about you? What about you? I will be considered in account based on my deeds. Ah, so what is your deed? I am talking so much logically so, so now. One thing Do you believe there is one God? I believe in one God. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? It's wrong. Okay. But Do you let believe me, Prophet? Let, let me answer one thing just before yes. this. Do you believe Prophet one? Muhammad is a messenger of God? Yes, as per the Buddha, as per the Vedas, is a Muhammad is a prophet. Yeah. Hala, so if you believe in these two things. Just if one thing, just to proceed before that. I am giving you a ticket. You are giving me tickets. <laughs> Who is liable to, because uh, just uh, as per the Bhagavad Gita, the soul is the power, just need to be transferred. He has to be faced for the every result. And, uh, the, and based on your just previous lectures, you told that the time of judgment, the same body will be reincarnated and they will be just like fingerprint will be the same. And uh, based by my understanding from our religion, that the soul is, will be transferred and at the time of judgment, the soul will be liable to be punished or rewarded. That's what you are saying. Yeah, that's Not your Veda. Not the Veda. What? That's what I'm telling you. That if there's a contradiction between a higher scripture and lower scripture, which will you follow? If there's a contradiction but, between Quran wait, and the Hadith, wait, wait. I will say Hadith is Zaif Hadith. But Veda, it's not doesn't, a true hadith. Veda doesn't say that the, the physical body will be reoriginated back. Veda says there is Punar Janam, that's it. The Veda doesn't say there is death, life, death, life. That is what is said otherwise. So what, is, what, does Islam, Islam. what does Islam say about soul? Is Islam says and the soul, the, the Islam says that once a person dies, his body dies, he'll be resurrected, Punar Janam, like the Veda. In the, and then there'll be Isab Kitab. Do you Isab do good Kitab deal? will be liable for the soul or the dead body? Soul and body both. Both? Yes, the soul will go back into the body. Both. So the, That's the reason when someone asked in my lecture, I said, how will Almighty God be able to reconstruct the bone? The answer is there, Allah will not only reconstruct the bone, He will reconstruct in perfect order the tip of the finger. Didn't I say that in my lecture? Yeah, yeah. So the body would be resurrected. The body after we die, the soul, body both will be resurrected on the day of judgment and then there will be a final judgment that is your good deeds more or bad deeds more if your good deeds are more then you go to jannah inshallah and what will be the condition if he dies around 80s year and old and someone is died in the irrespective same? whatever he dies he will not have the same thing here it will be different it will not be the same body like yours and mine it will be different you can't say a person died at the age of 80 will be rejected at the age of 80. If a person dies at the 8 month, not 8 month, it will be altogether different. But a body would be there. You understand? Yeah. It will be different. It will not be like you and me, how we are. But the I next see. life would be a different life altogether. But in uh, schools, I have studied in the Islamic schools in Pakistan, that uh, however, that uh, in the day of judgment, your hand will spoke that this hand has been did mistakes by his, uh, yes. his eyes will speak. So yes. the same eyes will be the, uh, as per this statement, not this, the same body will be re regenerated. And yeah, asking yeah, now, yeah, the Quran and the Hadith does mention that your organs will be witness against you. Yeah. If you hide something, your eye will give witness, you did this whether you did good deed or bad deed. Uh, so there's no problem at all. Your me, organs will be witness. It me. would not be the same like this. For example, if you tell me, oh, in the heaven, then after the age of 100, I'll die. No, it's different. Here you require to eat, there it is different. Your body would be there. How it would be? Allah alam. You understand? Allah. It will be there. How? We don't know. It will be somewhat different. But that life will be eternal life. Like our life is limited. Some live for the age of 60, some 80, some 100. But that life will be eternal. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you believe there is one God? God is one, yeah. Sorry? One God. And you believe idol worship is wrong? Yes. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. So these are the minimum two things required 
for anyone to enter the fold of Islam. Believe one God. And uh, yeah, just uh, you are giving me a ticket now, huh? Not ticket. Yeah, not ticket. Please, yeah, you are giving me a ticket, but what about? I am giving you direction, not ticket. Direction is the ticket no, is the wrong word. I am just following your the statement that you given just before. Once someone has uh, confessed the Islam, his previous deeds has been cut off and deleted off. Yes, not the future, the past. Past. Not the future. So what about his uh, previous deeds? Uh, he has uh, did a major kabira guna. Just he has. Uh, Whatever he has done, whether he had alcohol, no, whether he yeah. raped, whether he committed murder, it was done in why, ignorance. Why, why does Islam say that there's blood yes. in the face why? of mother? Why? Because that time he did not agree with the law of Almighty God. He did not know that murder is wrong. He did not know that uh, raping a girl is wrong. He did in the ignorance. Now, if you do something in ignorance, Allah forgives you. That is the reason when a person accepts Islam, whatever bad deed he does is washed away. It was done in ignorance. Now, today, you agree there is one God. Today, you agree Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Yesterday, you did not agree. So today when you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God and there is one God, you have to follow the rules and regulation. All your previous sins are forgiven. This is good. Why should God hold you responsible for something you didn't agree previously? So God is Rahman or Rahim, is merciful. Your previous sins are forgiven, now a new account starts. All the good things that you did will remain, all your sins would be forgiven and you enter a new life. So would you like to enter a new life? But even, even in the new life, there are the 72 sects and from that only one will go to the Jannah. There is no 72 sects. Just I uh, have heard in that... Uh, oh, that is, there is a hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There will be 73 sects. Yes. Quran said don't make sects. You don't follow any sect. You only follow Quran and say hadith. If you follow Quran and say hadith and do not make sects, you will go to Jannah. The moment you start making sex, then there is a problem. So what you have to do is read the Quran, follow the Quran, read the Sahih Hadith, and follow the Sahih Hadith. And this group that follows the Quran and the Sahih Hadith go to Jannah. The moment you deviate, I want to follow this human being, I want to follow that human being, then you start deviating. So which sect do you name this one, follow the Hadith and Quran? Islam, Muslim. There is no Shia Sunni. In the Quran, show me one word which says Shia Sunni. Where does it say? Why are these? Why these are different sects? That's what I'm asking they you. They have one Quran, they have one God, they have one Correct. prophet. All is the one, these then why are they are 72? Deviations. Based on? Based on their own thinking. Why they are not Muslims? If they deviate from the Quran, they are not. Even they are Muslims, they are deviated in between themselves. That then means how they are that? deviated Muslims. They aren't practicing Muslim. If you deviate, then you are deviated Muslim. You point out anything from the Quran, I will follow it. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 158, 159, anyone who makes sex in the religion of Islam, oh, Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. So making sex is haram. Anyone makes division, it is prohibited in the Quran. You ask me, what am I? I'm a Muslim. What am I? Muslim. Quran says, call innani minal muslimin. In no less than 20 places. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. It doesn't say Shia Sunni. Those persons who say I, I they are Shia. Know, but these names coming from Islam. Who has generated Not from these, Islam. Who has they, generated these names, these sects? You ask them who's saying that. I'm not saying. You are the leader, scholar of the Muslim. I'm telling you it is not there in the Quran. Do I call myself Shia? No. I call myself Muslim. So you are asking me, somebody else says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Brother Zakir, why is he saying 2 plus 2 is equal to 5? I go and ask him, I did not say it. If I ask them, they will convince me. That's why to th that's a, they I ask them to give reference from the Quran. You are intelligent or not? Uh, ask them which verse of the Quran says call yourself Shia. Ask them. Simple. Quran says, Kul hasu burhanakum. Produce your proof, but if you are truthful. Very easy. Anyone takes you for a ride, ask for the reference. The reason people like my lectures is because they come in the question and answer session. I give the Hindus the reference. They go and ask the Pandit. There is the reference. Oh, Majjao Shaitan. 
And what shaitan? I'm giving reference. You come and tell me, Zakir, I'm wrong. I will change. Right or wrong? There is no worse man. I'm telling you to accept Islam, not Shiaism. Accept, follow Quran and say Hadith. Not some other Sheikh. Don't follow Zakir also. Zakir in Islam is zero. No, I have been uh, mingled with Muslims many sects. No, no, mingle, so mingle the sect. style of Salawat is different, different styles of... That is all nonsense. Don't follow Zakir also. Follow Quran and follow Sai Hadith. If you follow Quran and Sai Hadith, Inshallah, you'll go to Jannah. I am unable to swim. You are asking me to jump in the mid. How swim I can swim? Who's asking you to jump? No, read Quran. <laughs> This is life boy, this, you know, this, this you know life, life, lifeguard. lifeguard if, I'm going to, if I'm going to ask you to jump with a life vest, will you jump or not? The shark can come. Huh? Shark. No, no, this is the life vest. The life vest will float only. Bas, khalas. <laughs> what more do you want? You want to drum? No. This is, what do you, Ajay? When you jump in the water, what do you want to do? Float and then come to the shore. Come to the shore or the life uh, rescue team. Or what? Or I life res rescue team. Life? Rescue team. Yes. This is sufficient. This is the key to all the problems. This Quran is the solution to the problems of humankind. The problem is you don't want to listen to this, you want to listen to other human beings. In my lecture, so, I only quoted from Quran or not. Uh, Dr. Zak, this is just on Many scholars in all the sects, they are many learned and very. Uh, no learned scholar, which learned May, scholar has I, given? I will just start to read this one, how I will be able to get the right direction from this one. From which one? From I prove to you today that Quran is the word of God, right or wrong? Quran is? The word of God. Did I prove yeah, or not yeah, today? Yeah, you yeah. prove, haras, follow the Quran, forget Zakir Naik. Forget Zakir Naik, follow the Quran, forget the other people. Anyone who says, Anything which matches with the Quran, follow it. Doesn't match, throw it away. Even tomorrow, if I say something wrong against the Quran, throw it away. Dr. Zakir is zero in Islam. Correct? Okay, you're right. What is number one Quran? Quran is only one. Sorry? Quran is only one for all. Only one. It, no Quran. Quran doesn't differ at all. So why these sects are different? That is what I'm trying to tell you. They are taking different translation from this one? No, they are deviating. They are putting their own things. Like how Hindus put their own things, even Muslims put their own things. Correct? That's the reason when we come here, we say, Kul hatu burana, kum is your proof, but if you're truthful, in kuntum sadikin. So the problem is, we have the open question and answer session, even to guide the Muslims. They are believing in this scholar, they are believing in that scholar. You follow Quran and say hadith khalas. If the scholar says something which matches with the Quran and say hadith, you agree with it. If it doesn't match, you throw it away. Right or wrong? Right. So easy. So you believe there's one God? Yeah, God is one and... Uh, and you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Yes. So why don't you take entry into the school? <coughs> I, don't I jump, will, take entry. I will get into the, through the Quran and I will check uh, and uh, just uh, going through the... If I am... Uh, no, no, follow the Quran. I'm not trying to follow anything else. The Quran says there is one God. I gave you the reference. Chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, right? Yeah. Quran says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God, Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40. Ma kana Muhammadun aba adim min jalukum, wa la khi rasulallah, wa khatim in nabin, wa kana Allah bi kulli shayin alima. That Prophet Muhammad is not the father of any of you men, but is the messenger of Allah. He is the seal of the Prophet. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. Who was this? Halas. How much time it takes to read? With reference. How much time? How much time it takes to understand this? Two verses only of the Quran. God is one. And the definition of God Surah Ikhlas, which I said in my lecture. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. These two are the two fundamentals for any human being to enter the school of Islam. Once you enter, slowly, slowly, you go from junior KG, senior KG, first standard, second standard. At least enter. Getting admission is the main important thing. We don't get admission, then where you you uh, keep on going to the Zakir, school, round and round the school, what is the use? Zakir, you don't get this opportunity always. You have been asking so long, see? The uh, longest. Uh, just uh, when I was in primary school, the Muslims, uh, friends of me, just asking from the...
primary, they just come to Islam, just come to Islam. And uh, there was a ayat, the Safai Nisf Iman. There is no ayah Safai Nisf I, I, I challenge you. So why, why you call it? There is schools? no ayah that cleanliness is half the deen in the Quran. There is no ayah. So it's, a, it's a written because on the Because you were a kid that time. You did not ask them for reference. Now you ask them for reference. Okay, there's no reference. If, if someone misguided you when you were in the school, what do you do? Now you get matured. Mm -hmm. Correct? There is no text in the Quran which says cleanliness is half the deen. In Sahih no Bukhari? Text. It is not there in the Quran. Is Sahih Bukhari? It is a saying. No, not even Sahih Bukhari. It's not there. MashaAllah, you know Bukhari. Tirmizi. Masha Tirmizi. It's not there in Tirmizi also. Not Ma in Sahih Sitta. It's not there in Qutub Sitta also. There's no Sahih Sitta. There's, only, there's no Sahih Sitta in Islam. There's Qutub Sitta in Islam. Sahih Sitta means six authentic books. There are only two authentic books, Bukhari and Muslim. It is a saying. It is a saying, Kahawa, you know Kahawat? You know saying? No, but it's like for Sai Bukhari in uh, Pakistan, we say that Sai Bukhari, Baadi Kitab Bari. Are Baadi Kitab, but it is not then Sai Bukhari also. You are smiling, Vaisha. Okay. This is, that is the reason, always ask for proof. It's a very common saying that cleanliness is half the deen. It is a saying. It is not even part of anywhere in the Quran, neither any Sahih Hadith. It is a saying. Right or wrong is secondary. Correct? Correct. So don't get misguided. Mm -hmm. Enter the correct school, okay. Quran. Agreed. MashaAllah. So you want to enter the school? Enter the school. And enter, follow it. In, enter the student and leave the scholar. Leave, leave the scholar. If the scholar matches with the school, follow it. If the scholar takes you away, leave him. Right or wrong? Right. So, right. so what do you like to say it in Arabic? You're from Pakistan, mashallah. You know Bukhari, Tirmezi, all these people who gave Shahada, they don't know that. So much you have studied, mashallah. So you want to say the Shahada? Mashallah, mashallah. You want to say the Shahada? Inshallah. Mashallah. mashallah. So you believe there's one God? And ah. you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? My inner sense, just I have, I have uh, see, I have is any, is anyone, my family, see. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? I myself, I'm not accepting now. Not accepting now? No. But now you said Inshallah. Inshallah means I have to go through the Quran. I have not seen this uh, in detail. Okay, I will, fine. And you are briefing these ayatas and... Uh, so okay, you're from Pakistan. I know Pakistan is very difficult. It's difficult, huh? Ah. India, Pakistan. <laughs> no, no, Pakistan. Anyway, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he give you hidayah, inshallah. and may he guide you to the two part, inshallah. inshallah. Can we have the next question? Thank you. Thank you.